Hello and welcome to this Infinite Runner engine tutorial. I'm Renault from Mount Mountains and today we're going to cover spawners in the engine. Um, so in the Infinite Runner engine, in most cases, uh, the player doesn't move across the level like it would in a regular platformer classic game. Um, instead, the level is infinite, so the world comes at the player. Uh, you can see it, I'm, I'm playing um, in scene view the jelly forest demo level and as you can see my uh, orange character is not is not moving in the um, on the on the x-axis i'm only jumping and moving on the y-axis instead the the world comes at me i'm gonna i'm gonna die soon i think yeah i'm dead um so um this is done using spawners in this case i have my forest platform spawner here which is spawning all these big chunks of of platforms um, the spawners are entities that you usually want to place outside of the camera view so the, the camera view here is my white rectangle here and uh, they will uh, spawn objects periodically or based on the distance or any settings you want will cover all that um, I'm gonna stop it because uh, it's kind of annoying um, there are really uh, different kind of, of spawners included in the engine we'll see them all today and uh, they will allow you to spawn things based on time span, distance between spawned objects, uh, maybe linked uh, spawn link objects, so they have an entry and out point. Um, you can also, of course, extend these spawners uh, to suit your specific needs. And uh, if you want to have a quick look at the different spawners, uh, you can check the, the sandbox demo scene, which is uh, located into minimal sandbox here. and. If you press play, um, by default, I think uh, these spawners are activated, but you can have also a look at the linked spawner, for example. I'm going to disable that one, enable that one. And what this one does is uh, it uh, it pulls between two different types of, uh, of objects to create some sort of infinite world. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, so the, the first class we're going to have a look at is uh, the spawner base class. So I'm going to close others and go to the spawner class. So uh, it, this one is meant to be extended. Uh, it's not meant to be added to any of your objects directly. It wouldn't, wouldn't work. Uh, but it handles all uh, the common features of all spawners, which are initialization. Uh, so you'll have that here. Uh, getting objects from the pool. Uh, so that's that's here and uh, it will also handle the size modification of the object uh, ratio preservation uh, rotation of the object and of course the actual spawn uh, it's also got a few public properties that you can set from other classes uh, such as spawning uh, which is here so by default it's true but uh, uh, if you turn it to false, of course, it won't uh, spawn anymore. Uh, only spawn while game is in progress, by default true, but uh, uh, you can use that to prevent spawn during uh, game over phases, for example, uh, or the introduction. And uh, you also have the initial delay in seconds here, uh, which is uh, the delay before the first spawn. Uh, during uh, from from starting from awake to the moment you want uh, things to spawn. The most uh, simple type of spawners is the timed spawner. Uh, if we turn that on off and activate this one, and if I press play, you'll see that this one spawns objects. So uh, basically a three D platform uh, with a minimum and maximum size of one. Um, every every one second because it it will take a random time between the minimum and the maximum spawn time uh, both are set to one so it's uh, basically you're telling it to spawn it every one second uh, if i point it if i change it to 0.5 it's now spawning every half a second and i could also set it like that and i would get a random time between one and two seconds uh, it's really the most simple um, spawner type you can have. Uh, we also have these settings that are common to all spawners, 
uh, where you can set the minimum size and maximum size. So for example, I could have platforms that are uh, much bigger. And as, as you can see, they keep being uh, square because I've checked the preserve ratio. If I uncheck it, I'll start getting uh, platforms that are much more wide than they, than they are high. And uh, now if I set it to free and free here, I have platforms that are um, that have an X value of three, a Y value of one, a Z value of one. I can also change the rotation. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, doing this, yeah. Uh, as you can see, it will here take uh, a Z angle uh, somewhere between zero and 90. Um, and, and all this you'll find on all spawners. So uh, it's really good to uh, have these options. Uh, I can also decide that it's not spawning anymore. Uh, we saw that previously when we were looking at the class. Uh, and I could also add an initial delay. Let's uh, show that. So one, two, spawn. And it's working. So uh, the only specifics of the time spawner are really the, the spawn timing. And uh, you can also uh, change the min and max position of the object. This, uh, this min and max position is really an offset uh, that you apply to the origin point. So uh, if I change that to uh, five here, uh, you'll see that I, I spawn five units, five unity units uh, above my position. I could also change that to something like minus five to five and I will get a random uh, position between these two values. Moving on, we have the distance spawner. So I'm gonna disable that one and activate um, this one, the platform spawner. So let's press play. Um, as you can see, this one also spawns uh, platforms. It's actually the same prefab. And this one, uh, we spawn objects based on the distance between it and the object, or the distance between the last spawned object and the next one. Uh, this will allow you to have something um, for example, if you want your objects to be uh, really close to each other, or if you want to make sure that the gap between two objects won't be too big, uh, and uh, so you can still jump uh, from one object to the other. Um, so we uh, have the size and the rotation as before. We have these uh, when can it spawn and initial delay uh, values that you can tweak. So these again are common to all objects, and this uh, this part here is really specific to the distance spawner. So I'm going to stop it because as the uh, time flies, uh, the speed of the level increases. Uh, that's something you can change in uh, your level manager here. So uh, initial speed is 10, maximum speed is 40. I'm going to stick it to 10, so that way the level doesn't uh, accelerate. So if I go back here, I can see that I have a Y uh, clamp, so uh, I can change that. That's the maximum value. Uh, if I have a random object spawning somewhere in between these, it will remain between the uh, blue lines here and there. And I also have, if I switch to 3D, I can also change that value for the Z value. This, this means that uh, the object will be clamped between these two values. Um, I can also decide to have uh, the object rotated to the direction. So for example, if I press play again, and if I rotate uh, my, uh, my spawner, you can see that I can spawn in any direction and the objects are um, following that, that rotation. If I uncheck that, they'll spawn using their initial rotation. Uh, what else? Well, the last thing is the gap between the objects. So uh, if I press play again, I have my objects with a minimum gap of one and a maximum gap of one. So uh, it's actually a, a forced uh, gap of one, but I could uh, change it to zero. And that way I would, if I press stop and uh, select one object, you can see that I have one here and the other here, and they are perfectly jointed here. Uh, 
this ensures it can be useful if you have chunks of a level where you don't want any bits between uh, your chunks. Uh, that way you can guarantee that they will be perfectly linked one to the other. But uh, sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want maybe to have a minimum gap of one, a maximum gap of five, and you get a random value. You can do the same thing for um, the, the y value. Uh, so you could have a minimum gap of something between minus two and two, but you could also, could also have a gap of, of two. Uh, in the y position so uh, of course here it's not easy to see because i'm uh, reaching my vertical uh, my vertical max value because i'm, I'm linked to the spawner so uh, these are spawning my platform spawner has a y value of uh, minus eight and as you can see these one have uh, a y value that is uh, two units above that. So uh, if I were instead uh, to change the gap origin, because here I have a gap origin of two related to the position of the platform spawner. But if I change that to the last spawned object, as you can see, um, it kept adding, it's not too late. Uh, <laughs> I got it just at the right time. So uh, this one had a, a Y value of minus 4.6, this one minus 2.6 and this one minus zero something point six because uh, it's reached the y clamp so it cannot got it cannot go above that but if I were to change the maximum y clamp from a to something like uh, 100 and like that and if I unpress play you'll see that it will keep getting up and up and up until it reaches uh, the maximum y clamp value in this case the minimum but uh, you get the idea um, so yeah you, you can change the gap origin from one to the other uh, it really depends on what you want to do I'm gonna stop that okay so uh, if if you've got a relative value uh, of the gap origin uh, related to the last pond object uh, you will want to change uh, these things but uh, it allows you to have more control depending on really what you want to spawn and how you want to spawn it uh, you may want to do different things uh, what's interesting is that you can combine this spawner with other stuff for example here I have an already set up uh, auto rotate platform spawner and if I press play you'll see that it's just a regular distance spawner but it's it also has an auto rotate script which uh, as you can imagine makes it rotate uh, according to the values set here and this can lead to some really interesting things it's mostly like if you had a particle emitter uh, in a way because you can you can really do fun stuff you can have your objects have also different behaviors when they are spawned uh, so let's have a look at the rubber spawner for example if I press play this one spawns uh, two d sprites that bounce so uh, really you can imagine that combined with something that auto rotates something in, in 3d maybe um, you can really achieve really funny things the, the spawners are really the, the core value of the engine the last example included in the engine is uh, the linked spawner so uh, i'm gonna press play again we've seen it before but uh, as you can see this one spawns uh, platforms that are linked one to the other how, we, how this works is that in the linked spawner you will need uh, well you, you can have a simple object pool actually but uh, it's, it gets interesting if you get more than one type of platform and here we have two so uh, link platform one link platform two uh, and the the linked spawner part is really just like the regular one where you can have a different size different rotation and you can decide when it spawns but uh, where it differs is that here you have these platforms and they're not just any platforms uh, if I drag one you'll see that they have this linked spawn object uh, component to them and as you can see when you select them uh, you have these really handy little handles uh, that show you where the link platform in is and the platform out is and what this does is that uh, when you spawn them 
the in of the next platform will go uh, straight to the out uh, position of the platform before it which means that they will connect like that and if I copy and paste this one this one has an in here this one has an out here and this will do something like this of course you can change uh, the position of the in and the out using uh, these little uh, values here so uh, you just have to you know set them up properly and if you want you can also press that button that will reset it uh, it can be useful too so when working with spawners uh, and we, we saw that in the object pool tutorial too but uh, there are two classes that you need to be aware of and, and if i select uh, this object for example you'll see that m most of the examples here that are uh, object that are pooled uh, have these so uh, the first one is the poolable object this one is mandatory if you want to use the object pools uh, the next one that will be really recurrent is uh, the moving object this one will move your object in a direction that you choose and that you can set up here at a certain speed a certain acceleration um, you can also decide whether or not you want the direction to be able to be changed by the spawner we saw that before when I had this rotating one that changed the direction of the object um, so yeah most of the time you want to spawn moving objects uh, you don't want to have a pile of objects that just keeps getting bigger uh, and then you have the out of bound recycle script uh, this one is kind of mandatory if you well you can you can get rid of it of course but uh, this means that your objects won't um, get recycled and this will lead to a lot of objects over time so you want them to be recycled uh, what this does is that you can define the distance behind the bounds um, at which the objects will be recycled the bounds are the yellow line here so usually really depends on your setup you can change the bounds to be much bigger or you can uh, set a size uh, a distance at which the objects will be recycled that's pretty much all you need to know about spawners uh, i hope you learned something new today and i'll see you next time